Uh, and when I was talking about doubling down, it was not just Adani Group, uh, but also for you know infrastructure as a play in India. What's happening is that it's a, it's a PPP model, as traditionally the government hopes it would turn out to be. But we've not seen really private participation come into the infrastructure story. I keep hearing about bridges coming up in India. The Trans Harbour Link just got inaugurated. I hear about new airports. Of course, Ayodhya is a, uh, one of the big stories right now that we are tracking from a tourism infrastructure standpoint. And so. I wonder if Adani caught your attention, whether you're going to be looking at broadening your base and getting more exposure to infra in India. Yes, yeah, so we've actually initiated last summer uh, in a bunch of other uh, infra type names, whether JSW uh, Energy, JSW Steel, and a few others. So b we do have a number of other positions which will benefit on the cement side and so on and so forth. So we, we are quite bullish on that side, uh, if, if you take a longer term view, not just, not, uh, not just the Adani group. And I think, I think the execution story is actually very good, which, by the way, I don't think uh, we feel doesn't get the full um, uh, day in the sun. If, the, if you look at the roads build out, uh, railway build out, airports, privatization, so on and so forth, it's actually quite dramatic versus Indian history. Hmm. No, but, but the, the original question was really about how you feel uh, as far as the whole Adani saga is concerned. How do you reflect back? Do you feel vindicated, uh, in a sense, with the Supreme Court's judgment? Uh, uh, because at that time you were pretty much swimming against the tide. Yeah, look, I think I think I think Marcus has spoken uh, because we, we did, when we initiated the position, uh, we the the way we typically do it, we 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 put a stake in the ground and then we keep working on the names and then if the data proves us uh, directly correct, we increase the position and we feel that the markets have clearly spoken and and vast majority of the allegations were kind of uh, yesterday's news. There there was no real substance, so I'm still kind of surprised how. How uh, how animated everybody was when the when the substance was not there, uh, so yeah. So yeah, do we feel vindicated? The answer is yes. Can I just ask you because obviously in, you just outlined some of the other investments you've made in India, and it's it's obviously a very bullish place to be. They've been the beneficiaries of a raft of you know flow coming in as well. But what what gives you pause? Is it you know that the prospect, however you know, unlikely that, you know, Modi wouldn't win the, the next election or is there any, you know, c concerns where about, you know, any kind of state elections? What, 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 what do you think about when you're trying to assess the downside risk potential? So first of all, w one thing which actually uh, is, 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 is not true is uh, foreign inflows. Foreign inflows have been very muted in India. In fact, last two years, significant outflows have happened. So despite whatever happened in China, India has not been a beneficiary of that. So it's been a very domestic flow story. Now, to answer your question, look, I mean, there, there's always election risk, but election risks are typically very short term. I mean, if I remember 2004 election, markets declined sharply for a few days and they begin to calm down. Uh, so there are a lot of checks and balances. So the election stuff doesn't, you know, doesn't bother me. But look, there's obviously execution uh, risk in every name that we own. And, and that's the kind of what we call the blocking and tackling of investing. So from a macro perspective, I think I, I think it seems reasonable. Could they be external shocks to the system of course they can happen but at this point it's hard to specifically predict what you know what could go wrong you know we, we just have to sort of uh, take take uh, take a day at a time but compared to what is happening around the world particularly the rest of asia uh, i think i think india is a little bit sort of isolated uh, in a good way um, the way the foreign flows have not been a big factor in driving these um, mm. and there's some frothiness in the mid cap side but i think i think that sort of ebb and flow of the markets